with a camera. Starring Charles Bronson. Miss Adams, I want you to get off a letter to Eddie Chris of the Atlas Heavy Equipment Company. Remind him he promised to level that property in one day, and if he doesn't deliver, I'll personally wrap a crane around his skull. Uh, get that all in, and uh, I'll make it polite, huh? I'll get right to the point, Mr. Kovac. I want you to stop a murder. Whose? My daughter. 16, beautiful, spoiled rotten. I did the spoiling. Why? Well, since my wife died, she's all I've got. Yeah, I know. I'm Bing Barney O'Neill, ex-ditch digger, self-made millionaire. I'm a big man. You can wear a tuxedo, and I know what fork to use. But lay a hand on my kid, and I'll kill you. Mr. O'Neill, if somebody's threatening your daughter, it's a job for the police. No, I want cops. I'll send for cops. This is a job for you, Mike. There's a picture angle. I ask, in the right places. They gave me one name, Mike Kovac. I haven't said I'd take the job yet. Fifteen years ago, my wife and I adopted Terry from Hathaway House. Uh, it's no secret. She knows. This morning, this came. Dear sir, I believe I have some information about your adopted daughter which will be of interest to you. May I have the pleasure of calling on you tomorrow morning? Robert J. Willings, private investigator. This was in it. That's what Terry looked like when they gave her to us. Where's the original? That's why I called you. The original of that picture is in the confidential file of Hathaway House. How'd this fellow Willings get hold of it and what does he want? I'll tell you. It's a shakedown, I can smell it a mile. And if he tries it, I'll kill him. Well, you know what I meant when I said I wanted you to stop a murder. Well, if you're right, you definitely ought to call in the police. No, you're wrong. I'll tell you why. My little girl's life is all planned. She's gonna have the darndest coming out party this town has ever seen. Then she's gonna get engaged. Then she's gonna get married to a nice boy from a fine family. At a hotel I now own. For 30 years ago, I dug ditches for the foundation. Mr. O'Neill, the more you tell me, the more important I think it is that you call in the police. Police mean headlines, Mike. They'll smear this and spoil it. I'm not going to have it spoiled. Well, this thing has got me all mixed up inside. I want to protect her and I want to kill. You're a man who understands these things. You've got to help. <laughs> Mr. O'Neill is just one of thousands of parents who have adopted a child from this institution. Despite his present importance, he has no special authority. Who has access to these files, Mrs. Carrington? No one but me, Mr. Kovac. Is there more than one set of keys? I have the only key. And the final contents are kept confidential even from my staff. Now, how do you explain this? Where did you get this? It came in the mail this morning. Mr. O'Neill asked me to check it. Something the matter? Someone's been in my closed file, I can tell. The folders are all out of order, see? The O'Neill file still here? I don't know. Yes, here. Here it is. Mr. Kovac, these folders contain the most complete and confidential information about each adoption. The name, the age, and the description of each child, the name of the natural mother, the name and address of the adoptive parent. Do you have any idea who could have broken any of these files? I don't know. But don't you see? In the wrong hands, this could be a cruel weapon. What are you going to do? We'll have to call the police, Mrs. Carrington. Oh, no. Please don't. Don't you realize what's at stake? 
In every city, there are thousands of parents with adopted children and thousands more waiting for their turn. If this gets out... I'm calling Lieutenant Donovan. He's a friend of mine. I'm sure we can trust him. I can't trust anyone, not even you. Why weren't the records kept in a safer place? What place would be safe from people who'd stoop so low as to exploit the love of parents for a child? Hang up the phone, Mr. Kovac. Please. Yes? Yes. It's for you. Kovac. Oh, what did you find out? I'll have to hold it until I see you. Well, that character Willings just called. Said he wanted to verify our date. It's at 10 tomorrow morning. You want a ringside seat for an execution. Don't be late. Mrs. Carrington. You've got to trust me, and I'll try to help you as much as I can. Now, tell me something. Has this place ever been broken into? Yes. About three months ago, my desk. Some vagrant, somebody got in here, but only the cash box was broken into. Now, that's where you're wrong. Somebody also broke into the files and photographed the records. Photographed? This is how they got the duplicate picture of the baby. Did you report the robbery? No. The janitor did. They hit him. But he came to and called the police. Did he see anyone? No. He was hit from behind. And all this time, we thought we'd lost only $28. Mrs. Carrington, whoever broke into the files has had time to plan every step. Oh. No, oh, please, you gotta get a hold of yourself. Don't talk to anybody. Don't answer any questions. We have one advantage. They think that nobody knows that they photographed the records or that a victim complained. Now, if you wanna get in touch with me, here's my card. Thank you, Mr. Kovac. All right, then, Mr. O'Neill, you count me out. If you're going to use muscle, get another boy. Simmer down. I'm just not used to being told what to do. Well, there's more involved than the O'Neill dynasty. There are other people, parents with adopted children. They've got as much at stake as you. They don't know it, but I'm working for them, too. OK, OK, so I sound it off. Look, Mike, let's start even. Call your shot. You'll do what I tell you to do? Well, it's either that or I take a walk and you get yourself another boy. Okay. You tell this ditch digger where you want him to swing a pick. The first thing to do was obvious. Get a look at this fellow Willings, hear his story, and get a picture or two for identification. I thought I could talk to you alone, Mr. O'Neill. We are alone, Mr. Willings. This character's from the old country. He doesn't understand a word of English. All right, I got your letter. What's on your mind? Well, you might say that this is the end of the mission for me, Mr. O'Neill. That's so? Yes, I represent a client who for the last 15 years has devoted every living moment of her life to a crusade. You mean she's been trying to find a baby? Yes, Mr. O'Neill, her baby. And now the crusader waits at the gate. Oh, come on, you can talk plainer than that. What do you really want? I want one thing. But let me talk to you about a woman who is also a mother. Fifteen years ago, while under the stress and strain of panic, she gave up a child, a little girl, a small, soft bundle of innocence she relinquished to strangers. Are you talking about my daughter? Her daughter. A little child wrapped in a blue woolen blanket with the initials A.L. embroidered in one corner. For 15 years, every walking, working moment of her life has been dedicated to finding her, and as luck would have it, she did. Luck or you, Mr. Willings? Well, let's just say that I was helpful, and let's just say that all she wants now is to look at her, just to look at her. Now, surely that's not asking too much? No, it isn't. But after that, then what? Why, nothing. She returns to the shadows from which she came. Just like that? Just like that. Well, surely you can find the kindness in your heart to grant this poor woman this simple wish? Would you believe that she spent close to $20,000 of her hard-earned money 
finding her. But it would be worth it. For her. And for you. Oh, I don't matter in this. I, I'm just an instrument. You play a pretty expensive tune. We ask for nothing. Material, that is. We realize that as a natural mother, she has no legal claim whatsoever. The answer is no. Of course. You're quite within your rights to say no. To her, to me, to anyone. You mustn't spoil the plans you have for pretty little Terry. Where does a man like you come from? And it's where I'm going that matters, isn't it, Mr. O'Neill? But surely, after spending $20,000, you can't object to my client waiting outside the school where your daughter is a student and just catching a glimpse of her, just talking to her, perhaps touching her, possibly holding her in her arms for a final moment of farewell. You're really one of a kind, Mr. Woodings. Now, my client agrees with you. As it happens, she's just outside. May I bring her in? Thank you. Names are not important, Miss Stromier. Merely let me say that this is Terry's mother. Pleased to meet you. How would she get out of the drunk tank? Suffering, Mr. O'Neill? Just plain suffering has brought this poor woman to the state you're seeing her in. But who's to deny her the healing miracle of brother love? You, Mr. O'Neill? Get out! Just as you say, sir. That's the St. Martin School for Girls, isn't it, sir? Come, my dear. That dirty, miserable chiseler. It's embarrassment. Twenty thousand dollars worth of embarrassment. Well, what are you going to do about it, Mike? I don't know. I haven't dealt with anything like this before. You better do something fast. A woman like that with my Terry. How'd it go? Well, the man inside was supposed to be a masseur. I don't buy it. Wait for him, follow him, you understand? I understand.
didn't make much sense over the phone, you're making even less now. There's no reason why I shouldn't stake out the O'Neill place and pick up Willings and the woman. We don't know how many others are involved in the shakedown. You pick up Willings and the woman, the others just take off with a duplicate file. That'll give them a nice start someplace else like uh, Chicago or Los Angeles. You know, children from that Hathaway house are scattered all over the country. So far, all you've done is waste a lot of time. You shot a whole lot of pictures. Some hood picks up your camera case, gets away with it. You're batting zero. That hood picked up a camera case full of flower studies in color. But he didn't get this. You know, sometimes you must even surprise yourself. <laughs> okay, I'll take it down to the lab and see if I can get a make on Willings and the woman. Yeah? Mr. Kovac, I'm afraid there's been another contact. Mr. Douglas Morley called me and said that he's just received a special delivery letter. And a Mr. Willings is coming to see him tomorrow about noon. They adopted a baby from here a little more than two years ago. Would you give me that name again, please? Douglas Morley, Vulcan Laboratories. I got it. Now, please try not to worry, Mrs. Carrington. Thank you, Mr. Kovac. It's all right. It's all right. Goodbye. Mrs. Carrington. She says Willings has contacted Douglas Morley. If they're working that fast, they could be using the same woman. Now, you let me get a picture of her, and that's all we'll need. Too much of a long shot. I'm picking them up. A picture, Donovan. Mike, I'm the police. You're a bachelor with a dark room and a hunch. But it'll work. I know it'll work. No dice. Donovan, wait a minute. Give me until noon tomorrow. Just until noon. Forget it, Mike. I'm taking over. Mr. Kovac? Yes. I'm Terry O'Neill. Come on in. Hello, this is Lieutenant Donovan. How are you, miss? Won't you sit down? Weren't you supposed to keep the police out of this? How did you know that? I saw and heard everything that happened in my father's den. I told him I was there. Mr. Kovac, is that woman my mother? Well, Terry, I can't say. I don't know. Why is my father willing to pay this woman $20,000 just so she'll go away? What? $20,000? Has he paid it yet? No, but he will. Says it's worth it not to have my life spoiled. Willings came back to talk to Dad after you left. And when you were there, he was ready to kill him. Maybe this is the break we need, Mike. When he hands over the money, we grab him. It won't work, Lieutenant. I heard Mr. Willings talk about selling my father some stock. My father's paying him $20,000 for it. Can he get away with that, Lieutenant? Smart gimmick, Mike. Con man buys a lot of worthless stock. Sells it to the mark for whatever he can squeeze out of them. Even if we pinch him, they got a record of a legitimate transaction. You mean to tell me the victim pays $20,000 for worthless stock? Stupid. Hard to prove illegal. Mr. Kovac, she's not my mother, is she? Terry, no mother would do a thing like this to a child. Donovan, till noon. Mr. Willings, uh, we have an appointment with Mr. Morley. Oh, yes, Mr. Willings. Park your car over there, please. Thank you, officer. picture of Willings and the woman without revealing myself. But when I developed it, I was in for an unpleasant surprise. Okay. Okay, so I'm wrong. But if it had been the same woman, we would have had to charge a fraud against them. I keep telling you that you can't fly a bomber solo. Now, for your information, I just talked to Mr. Douglas Morley on the phone. Guess what he told me? He doesn't know any Mr. Willings. Never heard of him, never saw him. For me to mind my own business. Willings was there. Sure he was. If you ask me, you'll be back this afternoon for the payoff. 
Not a bad day's work, 40 grand. Donovan, we gotta find out a way to stop them. There's no way with that stock gimmick. The victim unwilling to testify? Let me tell you something, Mike. By the time the gang works their way to California, they're gonna collect about a million bucks. They sure know how to make photography pay off. Well, wait a minute. I must be blind. Donovan, take a look at this. You see anything? Larger version of what I saw before. No, no, here and here. It's the same woman. She changed everything. The hair, the makeup, the clothes, but not the earrings. You've made a very shrewd deal, Mr. Morley. And profitable in more ways than one. With this money, this unhappy woman who gave up a child in a moment of despair will be able to travel away from the scene of her unhappiness and in time, a wound will heal. Mr. Williams, you remember me? Can't say I do. Quite a coincidence, huh, Donovan? What are you talking about? Who are these men? This woman happens to be not only the mother of Terry O'Neill, who was 17 her last birthday, but also the mother of the Morley baby. And she's willing to forget both of them at 20,000 apiece. Come on, you two. Hey! Over here! Lady, you'll be better off if you tell us where the copies of those files are. Hey, give me a break and I'll tell you everything. Uh... Lieutenant, I wish you'd give me about five minutes more. Thank you. 